Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by David O'Connor, Shells, Shelburne rather, uh, first team fitness coach. Now, David, you're running a, you're, you're doing ten marathons in ten days for the mental health awareness charity Aware. What's your motivation behind it? Yeah, like you say, so I'm uh, at the end of April, 20th through to the 29th. I'll be running 10 marathons in 10 days um, on an athletics track. Um, and I'll be doing this for the National Mental Health Organisation Aware, as we've just said. Um, and to kind of raise and further the discussion um, around mental health in Ireland. So for me, I've picked Aware because I've had my own experience with them. Um, and what they've done for me, what I've learned from them has been quite valuable just in terms of my own journey. Um, what they provide is an information service um, and a really high emphasis on education and support for you know, kind of anybody who has been affected by depression, bipolar disorder or any sort of low mood condition. Um, and for me, when I was a little bit younger, that type of service wasn't available. So. Yeah, there seems to be a whole like lack of that type of service in Ireland in general. Yeah, look, I I think it is changing. I think the horizon is changing somewhat, um, and it is getting a little bit better. Where I think, th as a nation, we're at the point of awareness, but I think we kind of need to we need to be careful that that doesn't become stale, and maybe try and bring it to the next point. So I, I feel just in what I'm doing and taking a bit of action, um, it's gonna do do good in terms of sort of progressing what AWARE do and what AWARE sort of promote themselves to do as a, as a mental health organisation um, and that's why I've chosen them for, for the madness of running 10 marathons in 10 days. Yeah, now, what, what, what was your inspiration behind doing this? So I, I'm very open, <clears throat> I've no problem talking to anybody about anything I've been through in, in terms of my own mental health and mental illness um, that, that I suffer from. So two things, I, I was bullied in school. Um, um, and secondly, at the age of 14, I was mugged with a syringe. I had a syringe held up to my neck. And I never had anything done, I never dealt with it. So there was a lot between the two things, like a lot kind of stuck inside me. And I kind of had a delayed reaction. So throughout my 20s, <clears throat> there was a build up of that. And just eventually, when it all came out, it, I allowed it to destroy me. And I'd be key to kind of say that I allowed it to destroy me. And it just became a kind of a conscious effort to just completely and utterly tear myself asunder, um, mentally more so than physically. Um, so I reached two really severe low points in my life um, where you know, there, there was nothing at the end of the tunnel. I just wanted out. It was a really horrible place to be. Um, and I didn't really know where to turn to. So I'm going back six years now. Um, the turning point for me was kind of looking at, I, I came to a realisation that if I had worked so incredibly hard to completely destroy myself, I could flip that around and work even harder to kind of build myself back up. So six years on, here I am, I, I'm doing okay. Um, I have a couple of bad days like everybody does. It's not perfect, but I'm certainly a million miles away from, from where I was. And as I said, it, it's down to Number one, as I said, the, the likes of the services that AWARE have provided, it's down to my family and it's down to my friends and just having a support network that I can trust and just trusting myself as well. So, you just in regards to AWARE, is there somewhere like you can you can go to speak to someone? Yeah, so if you go on just to... Just in case anyone watching... <coughs> yeah, maybe. no problem. If you go on to the website, www.aware.ie... I'll try that in the link in the, in yeah, the description. Yeah, perfect. There's, um, there's a very... Uh, it's very easy to follow. There's a breakdown of seminars... Um, a breakdown of courses, there's breakdown of online services, there's contact numbers, everything is there. Um, it, it's kind of easy to follow, so based on obviously what you might be feeling or anything you might be unsure of, if you get in contact with them directly, if you're not sure, just scouring through the website, um, they'll be able to point you in the right direction, absolutely. Okay, and um, what, what's, what's your opinion on, on mental health awareness? Uh, like I say, it, it, it's reached the point, I think the awareness is there. Um, it's definitely there and, and it's kind of evolved over the last couple of years but I think there has to be a kind of a next step and and I'm just going to use this sort of this setting we, as, as we're talking about kind of Irish football and that I'll just use this as an example um, to maybe have a platform or a protocol in place whereby every player um, throughout the country senior men and women all the way down to schools level where there's something in place that they can be open 
Um, it doesn't have to be open in front of the dressing room, but it can be open with the manager, which then follows through to a process of where they can go or who they can deal with uh, if they're feeling down or, or, or there's something in their head they can't they can't deal with. Yeah, exactly. Because if you look at like players like like Aaron Leonard <coughs> for for Everton, you know, it's not like Orange or like, but he was suffering last season, and now he's just like getting the help needed, and he's came back and he's back playing and stuff like that. So a lot of people think oh because these players don't have the, the, the uh, because they have the money and everything like that even Gary Speed got rested um, all these people like it's not really in regards to the money mm. I do agree with you that they should have some something in place for, for everybody and it's great to see that they are starting to kind of push it out there more and more mm. which is which is really what's been needed you look at it like um, with Aaron Lennon um, like he, he earns a serious amount of money people were right, giving him sticks saying oh well he earns X amount of money, he shouldn't be depressed. Like, yeah, I just that, that money's nothing to do with us. I, I mean, the, the setting, the environment, it's nothing to do with us. I mean, you all the money in the world, you'd have a beautiful family around you, and um, you could have everything, and something will just click there. It, it, it doesn't make a difference. And I think if, like you say, if somebody like Aaron Lennon is coming out and saying that he's well known, he's in the public eye, it can, it can kind of, it can have that effect that'll maybe just, it'll open the door for somebody else to say, okay, well, maybe I can sort of, I can come to that other side as well. And it's not about, you know, you don't have to feel that pressure to kind of go out, tell the world about it, it's not about that, but it's just doing what's right for you. And I think, to be fair, I think most managers, we're talking football, as you said, like most managers within the league, I think if a player came to them and said, look, I'm feeling this, that and the other, I have no doubt whatsoever every manager will put an arm around the shoulder and point them in the right direction but as I said I just I think if there was a connection there whether with one of the charities one of the organisations with the union um, and maybe there is one officially but um, if there was something kind of out there I think it would be a great help for kind of everybody involved uh, Do you mind me asking why it is you're, you're running on track? Yeah so look one marathon um, throughout the streets of Dublin is hard um, ten marathons is even harder and then if you throw that onto a running track it's harder again so um, an athletics track is 400 metres so 26 miles 400 metres is 105 laps per day for 10 days straight um, it, it's madness <laughs> it's, you know there's no denying it. it's going to be the, the most difficult challenge I'll ever go through kind of physically and mentally in my life the reason I've chosen it is to bring it back again um, to mental health and mental health awareness such a short loop um, it symbolises the, the isolation, the pain, the monotony, um, the boredom, that kind of never ending feeling that you can kind of associate with any sort of mental illness. Um, so the flip side for me then, and, and for everybody who's maybe been affected, is if you can develop the right mindset, if you can surround yourself with the right people and keep going, you'll get through it. And that's what's going to get me through this. Um, so first nine days I'll be running solo it'll just be my team around me so my physio sports scientists everybody's just looking after me make sure I'm in good health and then the final day which will be Sunday 29th of April we're going to have a kind of a family day so it'll be brilliant we're inviting a lot of people down and we'll have music food that sort of thing and we'll be giving people the option to run with us so um, in terms of where we're at I, I'd be looking particularly in football circles to have as many clubs within the league um, again, both, uh, both throughout the, the League of Ireland, um, senior men's, uh, women's national league, all the way down, as I said, mentioned earlier, just the schools level, as many clubs as possible. Um, I'd love to see out representing them, wearing their shorts, representing themselves, representing them teams, um, representing their teammates, people who may be quietly suffering. I think it'll be, um, it could be a really big stand in terms of uh, pushing mental health awareness. So that's that's our intentions, as I said, as many people as possible um, in terms of friends and family and people that we know. And then in our circles, League of Ireland boys, football boys, as many clubs as possible. Um, I'd love to see out represented and running alongside me on the final day. So, so that's the plan. That's where we're at. Uh, and that's brilliant. So, boys, he's now on as well as that. We'll throw the dates, and when it gets closer and closer, I'll obviously be, I'll put the content out there for yourself. Just in, in in terms of the charity itself, have you got a link or a GoFundMe or anything like that that we, uh, I can put in the bio for people to raise for for yourself? Yeah, we'll have a GoFundMe uh, page. Um, we'll have that set up by the end of January. Um, we're very considerate. We, we didn't put it out the first week of January for obvious reasons. I don't think people would look at it twice. It's, it's a tight month for people after Christmas. But if you're looking to kind of follow the journey in terms of where we're going, we have the Facebook page, which is just Aware 10 and 10. 
and um, you can have a look at that there's a good bit of content kind of rolling out over that in terms of video postings and just keeping up uh, keeping up to date with what's going on and um, my own gym page on instagram which is um, performance underscore doc and um, if that's if people are more interested in kind of the training side of how i'm preparing for this um and so this would be following your journey basically yeah exactly i'm just putting out a lot of stuff just uh, in relation to mindset and um, in relation to my own mental health experience um, and as I said, just in relation to obviously the training and preparation for uh, running 10 marathons in 10 days. Okay, and I'll, I'm, I'll throw all those links in, in the description as well and in the caption on the, on our Instagram uh, itself. Now, you're with Chelsea at the moment, are you doing pre seasons at the moment, is it? Yeah, we're, we were back last week, um, so we, we've a week and a half under our belts now, and we've our first game coming up against Bowes as well at the weekend so lovely uh, yeah go well good to be back um, I think I think players this generation they'd be itching to be coming back you know so uh, so far so good settled squad I think Owen it'll be two years in the job this year um, you know he's kicked on from the good work that Kevin Doherty did before him and I think for the first time just looking at it we it, there hasn't been a big turnover of players so it's a settled squad, which, in my opinion, I think there's a really good balance there and a really good mix in terms of uh, experienced players, the younger players who are now experienced, and then the younger players again who have come, come through. So the dynamic looks good. So it's early days, but but everything everything looks everything looks healthy. It's been a good start, and as I said, we just keep that going now. Yeah. Well, I uh, wish you all the best for the season going forward, and uh, thanks very much for coming on. And it was a pleasure to help raise awareness for yourself and for your charity. And uh, guys, don't forget to check out uh, David's Facebook or Instagram page and uh, also their Facebook page as well. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, as well as that, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.